Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Pandemic, the Fall of Rome, which is the latest standalone Pandemic game where designer Matt Leacock has teamed up with another board game designer to create an entirely new original take on the core Pandemic formula. And I'm going to be showing you how it works today in a solo run through. Although, before I get going, I strongly recommend you turn your subtitles onto the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you have done so, then welcome to 5th century Rome. The Empire is potentially about to fall. There are five barbarian tribes. The Ostrogoths, the Visigoths, the Huns, the Vandals, and the Anglo-Saxons and Franks who are going to be spreading throughout Europe and trying to sack cities left, right, and center uh, to trigger our decline. And, if that weren't enough, there's also the potential for corruption within Rome itself that could also bring us down, depending on the choices we make. And like I said, I'm going to be playing this solo today to give you an idea, because I would say probably 80% of this is really, truly the core Pandemic formula. Every turn you get to do four actions, and most of the actions are pretty similar if you know basic Pandemic. Then at the end of your turn you draw two cards and resolve revolts, if any of those happen. Those are the equivalent of Epidemics. And then the Barbarians invade. We draw cards from their deck. But... Um, in a, in a solo version of this game, I'm actually going to be a general somewhere within Rome controlling three characters uh, who are spread all over the board. But the interesting thing is, unlike regular Pandemic where each player has their own hand of cards, in this solo variant, I just have one hand of cards that is spread amongst all three of them. So I can use these cards with any of my characters. And as well, I have access to a treasury, which is an additional set of cards over here that I can swap cards. You know, in regular Pandemic, a big part of the strategy is players getting together to a location and then swapping cards. And since I'm playing by myself, I've got three characters, one hand of cards, but I can swap with the treasury whenever I need to, to set collect. Right. So, I've got it set up. Today, I'm going to be the purple Vestalis character, who is got to be one of the coolest characters I've ever seen. Not quite like anything else in Pandemic history. She can see the future, folks. Uh -huh. And we've got the Magister uh, Militium, Mr. Pink over here, and we've got the Consul, the yellow character. Now, I got a starting hand of three city cards, and I had to use these to say where my characters were. So, over here in uh, uh, Jessericium, I'm sorry, I can't keep saying all these Latin words. I'm uh, Jesso up here, this purple town, that's where I put my strongest military character because as part of random setup, uh, Magon Tiankium, or Tiankum has six tribes, three Anglo-Saxons, and three Vandals. This is the most dangerous place in the world right there, which is why I put Mr. Pink, Mr. Military, right next to it, because that was one of my starting cards. And um, I in Constantinopolis, over here, down in the blue section, that's where I put the Consul, who is my second strongest military advisor, so that he can move over here to Philippopolis and try to take out the three Visigoths and the two Huns that are running rampant. And then, uh, my Vestalis, who is the weakest military character, I put her just kind of in the center off here in uh, Aquilia. And every character starts with two legions. And again, normally if you were playing with more players, everybody would have a starting hand of cards. But as it is, all three of these characters in the solo game share the same hand. But then we've got access to the treasury over there. So right, game is set up. Uh, we drew a bunch of cards to decide where the invasions were happening. We've got our starting hands. We've got our starting locations. We've got our starting legions who are going to fight along our side. So let's get going. Starting with Vestala, she is the first player. And what can I do? Well, it's going to be four actions. And most of these actions will look pretty similar to a Pandemic fan. You can march, which is to say, move from one region to another. And when you march, you can bring up to three legions of soldiers with you. Uh, each uh, one of these legions, I think, represents like a thousand soldiers. You can sail, which means you discard card cards to travel from one port to another port so you can get around really quickly. Kind of like air travel in Pandemic, but not quite as powerful. You can fortify. This means discard a card that matches the city you're in to fortify, to put a fortress there, uh, which is very nice because if you're in a fortified city, this is new, you can recruit more army. You can recruit more legion to your side. Okay. You can battle. This is the Pandemic equivalent of removing cubes from the board. But unlike regular Pandemic, you can't do it alone. You need to pull these Legionnaires with you to be able to fight the Horde. 
You can't just uh, move into a space and start moving cubes. You can plot. This is the equivalent of Pandemic, where two players get together in the same city and start trading cards. And now in the solo game, I can plot pretty much anywhere I want, um, because it's always like the treasury is with me in any city. If I want to get uh, this Black Rome card, all I got to do is get to Rome, and I can plot to pull this out of the treasury. Or by the same token, if I move over to Constantinopolis, I can put this card in the treasury to save it for later, because at all times, we have a hard hand limit of seven cards. Alrighty, we can forge alliances. That's the equivalent of curing a disease, a la pandemic. And that means I need to set collect three blue, four orange, four green, five white, or five black cards all in my hand to be able to ally myself with one of these five tribes. If I can ally myself with all five tribes, the fall of Rome is averted and we win. Although there's other ways you can win as well. I'll talk about that as we go. And then finally, the last thing, if... I have allied myself with a tribe, I can enlist barbarians from that tribe, converting their cubes into more legions that will help us fight. Okay, so she's first. What is she going to do? Like I said, she is our weakest fighter. So even though she has two legionnaires, you know what she could do is, she could, for her first action, she could march. She could come up here to uh, Carnuntum. And then for her second action, she could have her two legionnaires try to fight these three Barbarians, but she is so weak, I don't think I'm going to do that. Instead, I'm going to have her for free. This does not take an action. I'm going to have her drop one of these uh, legions off. And then for her second action, she's going to march back. Third action, march. Fourth action, march over here to Philippopolis. Because there are five hordes over here. And right now, the consul is going to have to take them all on by himself. But hey, she's brought over somebody to help out. So, uh, when the consul marches in here, he will have his two legions plus the legion that she brought to be able to fight this bigger group. So, okay, I think that's it. We're going to go with that. Now, there's more she can do because her, her main special power is at any time, without having to spend an action, mind you, she can discard a city card from her hand to draw another event card. That is so awesome. Normally, when you set up Pandemic, you put a few event cards in the city deck, and then the rest of the cards are just out of the game. They go back in the box. But when the Vistalis is in game, you keep them all here in a shuffled deck, and... <clears throat> she can start discarding cards. So she right now is in a green slash white city. If I had any green or white cards, I could discard them to get an event. Now I don't. I've got blue and orange, so I can't use her power right now. I could have used her power when I was still over here in Aquilia, and I could have gotten up these blues. I don't want to give up these blues, though, because remember, if I get three blues, I can ally myself with the Ostrogoths, and I'll be one step towards winning the game. So I'm not going to use her power this turn. I'm certainly not traveling over to orange. Orangeville to get rid of an orange, because I have a good use for this orange card as well that you'll see in a second. So I'm not using her special free bonus she can do to convert city cards into events, which is awesome. Now the other special power she has is, unlike other characters who always draw two cards and resolve revolts, she draws three cards. Well, she can. She doesn't have to, but she can draw three cards and put one of them back on top of the deck, because she can see the future! which is so awesome. So her turn is over. She's done her four actions. She's come over here to help the fight. She's just dropped off one guy to kind of protect this city. This guy, without a leader, without one of the three characters, can't initiate a fight, but he can still protect this area from more invading uh, uh, barbarians. He, when he's by himself, he kind of functions like a quarantine token from other versions of Pandemic. So, or, or the uh, clean water from Pandemic Iberia. Anyway, though. So, her turn is over. Instead of drawing two, she's going to draw three. And she's going to put one back. All right. Revolt. I think we'll put this back right now. We don't want to deal with a revolt right now. Because there are one, two cities that could potentially really cause problems for us. Um, with a revolt. So we're going to put that back. We know at the end of Mr. Pink's turn here, Mr. Magister Militum, we're going to have a revolt because we've foreseen the future. And otherwise, hey! Oh, wow! Oh, this is perfect. Philippopolis dropped into our lap, as did Genoa. Okay. So, I've now got five cards in my hand that all three characters share. The maximum hand size is seven, so I don't have to discard yet. But if my hand keeps getting bigger and bigger, I might start trying to use these cards to put them over here in the treasury so I don't have to discard. All right. 
Vistalis is done, but the last thing that happens on her turn is the Barbarians invade. Now we're at the beginning of the game, so we're only drawing two cards for every invasion, so let's draw and see what we get. Constantinopolis, the, um, the Vandals, the Black Barbarian tribe, is going to try to invade Constantinopolis. And you can see right here, there's a nice little summary of where Constantinopolis Constantinopolis is on the board, and the migration path that the Vandals have to follow to get there. These concepts of migration paths are the single biggest new interesting thing about the game. Because in regular Pandemic, oh, if you drew Constantinopolis, you just say, okay, I'll put a cube on Constantinopolis. Easy peasy. But that doesn't work now because the Vandals do not have a supply chain coming from their home country leading all the way along this path down to Constantinopolis. They can't just invade Constantinopolis because they have to follow this migration path. Which, by the way, according to the rules, these migration paths actually roughly emulate the true historic migration paths of these barbarian tribes. So here's the deal. Since they can't jump right into Constantinopolis because they're so far away, what you do is you find the city and then you start working backwards from there until you find a place they can invade. So not Athena, not Syracuse, not Car uh, Carthage, not Caesarea or Tingley. We keep going backwards. Uh, Corduba, uh, Caesarea Augusta, uh, Vertigalia, um, Ludunum. And boom, this is where, even though they wanted to get to Constantinopolis, it's too far away. So we worked backwards until we got to the first place that has a connection. Because you can see, there's a connection from their home country out here to Mongol Tikim, over here to Ludium. So this is where they invaded. Now that they've invaded in Lugnum, if they ever drew this Constantinopolis card again, again, they can't reach it, but they would extend to Bergam. And eventually, you can see, they just extend further and further and further, making this chain. But as you might imagine, if we're smart about where we attack them, we can bust holes in the chain and mess with their overall migration patterns, which is a big part of the overall strategy. So anyway, that was the first card. The, uh, the Vandals wanted to get to Constantinopolis, but they had to settle for Lugdunum. Alrighty, next invasion. Uh, the Visigoths want to get to Corduba. Alrighty, so that means we take a uh, Visigoth, we find Corduba, which is all the way down here in Spain. Oh, they can't reach this, so let's move backwards along the path. And in fact, here's where they are. Because these guys were here, this is where the new one is. If these guys had been wiped out, they would have had to come all the way back here, because this is the first place out of their zone, their, you know, their own home region. All right, so they're expanding a little bit. And finally, the first turn for Vestalis is over. And you know what? Honestly, that wasn't too terribly bad. But now we move on to Mr. Pink here. And we know at the end of his turn, there is going to be a revolt. So let's have him step up and flex some military muscle. All right, so here's my hand. First thing, I'm going to discard uh, Jesser Kjum, whatever, the city that he's in to fortify that city. So, this is the equivalent of building a research lab in regular pandemic. Alrighty, so we've done that. And I actually, you know what? I should stop for a second and say, I forgot to mention, not only am I playing the solo version of the game, I'm also playing a special advanced variant called the Roma Caput Mundi Challenge, which is again based on the historical laws that prevented. Oh, where is it? It actually says right here, uh, it is based on history. And just start the region where you start and I place them to see. I forget. I forget. It says in here somewhere, but uh, basically, yo, you, players must respect the law that Roman legions cannot enter Rome itself. If you play the normal version of the game, there starts out, we already start with one fort in Rome itself because the legions are allowed in. But historically, they weren't allowed in at this point. They were kept out. So it makes it much harder for us to protect Rome. One of the ways we can instantly lose is if Rome is sacked. And we can never deploy military into the city to prevent that. The best we can do is try to build um, defenses outside the city because we can't move our Legion in, because I'm playing with this special variant. Anyway, though, so first thing Mr. Pink did is he built a new fortress by discarding a card. Second thing he's going to do, now that he is in a fortified city, he is going to recruit some army. We're still here on the first level. We have not pushed up this, so that means we get to recruit three more legions. 3,000 more troops at the ready to help fight the barbarians. Okay, that was my second action. Third action, march! 
He's going to move south to our real hot spot. And remember, when you march, you can take up to three legions with you. He's going to bring all three of them down here. So, in the same way that I rushed over here to drop off a legion to protect this city, we've left two legions and a fortress to protect that city. All right, which could help in the future, depending on how invasions work. You'll maybe see how that happens. Now, the fourth action, he is going to battle. And since I've got three legion, I can attack with one, two, or all three of these legions, which means I'll roll one, two, or three dice. Now, the more dice I roll, the more I risk having these legions wiped out. But as you might imagine, the more damage I can do. And since there's six barbarians up against these three legions, I'm going to roll everything. And fortunately, it's the Mr. Pink, the Magister Militium, whose main special power is he reduces his losses in combat by one. Um, but he also has a special bonus power. Let's see if we roll lucky and we'll get it. Let's roll. Boom. Okay, I can't complain about this. This is pretty good. He has taken out three barbarians. And the nice thing is, we didn't suffer any losses. Let's say I'd rolled like this. This would say, hey, we take out three barbarians, but we lose one legion. This might say, oh, we took out two barbarians and we lost one legion. Or this might be, hey, we took out four barbarians and we lost one legion. Now, if we'd lost a legion, it wouldn't have been a problem because he would have absorbed the loss um, and we would have lost one less. Now, there's two other things you can roll. Uh, on these dice, two sides are just taking out a single barbarian. That's a, You're going to get a 33% chance for every roll that that's all that's going to happen. You take out the barbarians, you don't loot, suffer any losses. I've shown you all the other ones, except for this. If you roll this, you trigger the special power of your character, and every character has a different special power. Mr. Pink's special power is, if we'd rolled that, he would take out two barbarians instead of one, which makes him our strongest military leader. He doesn't suffer as many losses. He has a one in six chance for every die to do double damage. By uh, comparison, Vestal is here. She's our worst fighter, because if she ends up rolling the special result, we lose a legion without taking out an associated barbarian, because she's such a terrible military advisor. So anyway, here's what we rolled, which means we can take out any three of these cubes we want. I could take out all of the Vandals and leave all the Anglo-Saxons, or, you know, I think I'm going to take out, I'm going to take out two of the Vandals and one of the Franks. Okay, so this city is looking a lot safer. Now, and we didn't suffer any losses. If I had another action, if I had a fifth action I could do, we could just attack again and uh, keep on fighting. But that was it for him. He's done. He has put some damage. He hasn't suffered any losses. And now at the end of his turn, we're going to draw two cards. And we already know what one of them is because we've foreseen the future. Revolt! And what's the other one? Um, Constantinopolis. Okay, so this is going to go into our hand, etc., etc. But now we have to revolt. This is the equivalent of an epidemic card. So we go on ahead and put this over here, and we go through three steps. First of all, we increase the invasion rate. The higher this gets, the worse things are. Right now, we can still recruit three troops in a fortified city, but later on, we can only recruit two or even one. And right now, we're still drawing only two cards, but later on, we'll draw three, four, and even five. So the bigger the invasion, the higher on the invasion track, the more likely we are to fall. But anyway, so uh, we increase that, then revolt. We draw from the bottom of the deck, and whatever city this is, ignoring supply chains. Normally you have to support supply chains like you saw me do before, but in this case we completely ignore it. Three cubes are going to show up. All right, it's going to be three vandals, three black cubes in Cordoba. All righty, and this comes over here, and we get one, two, three in Cordoba, which is way down here. And now this is an interesting thing. Remember how um, before, when we wanted to go to Constantinopolis, we had to trace all the way back over here. This was as far as they could go. If we drew Constantinopolis now, we would trace back to here because now they've got a foothold in the Iberian Peninsula and they can start their invasion force and get up to Rome even faster, even though these two spaces are skipped. Even if we took this guy out, um, because they've got a foothold here, this can be a staging area for them. So this is a problem. Sooner or later, we got to get down here and take these guys out. All right, so that was step two. There's Revolt, and now step three, Intensify. If you know Pandemic, you know how this works. You take the discard pile, you shuffle it up, you put it on top of the deck, and places that have already been hit are going to be hit again. And we're in trouble. Corduba and um, Philippopolis, these are the two regions that might get sacked, depending on how we draw. And now here's an interesting thing. Here's the cards we've drawn so far. Here's the cards that were used for setup to decide where the starting um, stuff was, like regular Pandemic. And here's 
five additional cards. This is new. Um, these are all Rome. These are all the cards that all the tribes use to try that they want to invade and sack Rome directly. These also go into the deck, which makes for an interesting change right from the get go. Even if you get an early epidemic or revolt, you have a very, very thick deck of cards that they might strike anywhere. Um, which is good in the early game because it reduces the chance of getting hit in your really weak spot. Um, but it's also scary because Rome is the most powerful card. Rome is the end of the line for all the tribes. Um, you know, sometimes you can get cards that draw, that put them way back in the distance, you don't really care. But it, whenever you draw a Rome card, it's, well, it's bad, but it can be good because uh, you, we know that's what they want to do, and we can predict uh, what they're going to be after. So anyway, so we shuffle this deck all up. This is the Intensify. Pandemic fans know what this is all about. This is terrifying. But you can see just how many cards are going here. This is very different than regular Pandemic. Let's just do one more quick shuffle. All right. What a revolting development. And now, so that was it, we've resolved the revolt card, and now we invade cities. We're still only invading two, and please, 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 no uh, Philippopolis, no, no Corduba. And of these cards, of all the cards that are in here, there's one Corduba and two Philippopolis, one white and one green card. So I don't like my chances. I didn't get a chance to get, well, we'll see what happens. Come on, fingers crossed, here we go. We're drawing two, and uh, just Karim. Okay, oh, this is nice. All right, so that's not so bad. Here's what happens. The, uh, the Franks, the Anglo-Saxons, a single orange cube wants to come over to Jessicarium. They want to you know, head out, but here's the thing. Remember how I left some legions behind? These guys will protect the city. And what that means is the cube doesn't get to come here. They will come in and attack, and the uh, legions I left behind will defend the city. This guy dies and this guy dies. And the city is still defended by the other one. Now that's because they were attacked instead of ambushed. Whenever you have cubes trying to move into a city where you have legion that is supported by a fort or by a player, they get attacked, which means uh, you lose one legion for every cube. But say I hadn't put this fort here, right? And um, I had two guys. If there's no fort or there's no player, they get ambushed. And that means when a single cube comes in, all of the legions who are there get wiped out. So that's terrible. That's why I left the fort here so that these guys don't get ambushed. They just get attacked. So the cube didn't appear, and this guy is lost. And the city is still defended for future. All right. So that was the first card we drew. Let's see what the second one is. Please, no. No Philippopolis. Constantinopolis. Yeah, all righty. No problem. Oh, and this can, gives me the opportunity. The uh, Vandals want to go to Constantinople. They can't do it, so they run back all the way over here. So you can see they're starting to build up. And over time, this these can start um, you know, creating chain reactions with each other, just like so. And it's all the way at the far end of the world. That's going to be a problem for another day. We're going to have to take a ship and sail down here and take these guys out eventually. This is going to be a problem. Plus, remember, Corduba is coming. When we draw Corduba, we're, instead of putting a fourth card here, Corduba will be sacked, and the Vandals will spread everywhere, and decline will start to come. Right. Phew. All right, so that was our second turn. Now let's move on to the council. He has two special powers. Now his special power in combat is he gets to summon a legion from just from somewhere. He can conscript, lo conscript locals because he is a member of the Roman government. So that's pretty handy. Also, if he wants to spend an action, he can add a legion to any city that has a fort anywhere on the board or as an action, he can add a legion to where he is. Normally, you can only add legions if you're in a city with a fort, but he can basically create these defenses from anywhere in the world. If all the guys were wiped out here as an action, he could put another one there to continue protecting the city. Or he can just summon them wherever he is. Alrighty. So what's he going to do? He's got four actions. And for starters, he's going to move into Philippopolis. So we had the chance to try and take these guys out. Alrighty. So, and, now here's the thing. Um, I brought her down here so that we have three legionnaires to fight. I didn't realize... I was going to be having Philippopolis in my hand, my second action, just like Mr. Pink did. I'm going to discard this and put a fortress here. So now this frontier area, which is one of the main, which is one of the main entrances that the Huns and the Visigoths will leave their region and move onto the map, is now fortified. So it's much easier to recruit. Action number three, 
He's going to fight. Uh, he's going to fight with all three. We're going to roll. We're going to see what we're going to get. Fingers crossed. All righty. Two um, Barbarian losses. A third Barbarian loss. And, unfortunately, one of our Legions drops. So we lose a Legion. We take out two. Let's take out both Visigoths. All right. So now we're in no danger of exploding. So that's pretty cool. All right, and unfortunately, if we had rolled his special power, he would have immediately summoned another Legionnaire, um, which could be very, very cool as well. But that's not what we rolled. All right, so that was the third action. We could have him fight again, but now there's only two, so he could roll two and try to take out the rest of these guys. Or, you know, we've got this under control. I think it's more important, while we can still do maximum recruitment, he's going to recruit and get three more guys into the world. And these are guys we can leave in this zone, or either one of these two players can take off and tr take these guys and take them to the other frontier cities to protect, or take them to, to fight all these little guys over here before they start becoming a problem. So, that wasn't too bad. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're done with him. We didn't use any of his special powers, but they'll come in handy later. Once this last guy drops, we're going to want him to put another guy without having somebody walk all the way over there, etc. So he draws two cards, and since we just had a, a revolt, I know we're not going to get another one for a while. So we've got uh, Mediolanum and Roma. One, two, <gasps> That's it, folks. We've got three blues. We can actually ally ourselves with the Ostrogoths. One, two, four, five, six. And we only have six cards. We don't have to discard yet. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. We're going to be uh, making a treaty very, very soon. So we've drawn two, and now two more invasions happen. We've got, oh, Philippopolis. The Greens. The Huns want to come. And so they will. Well, no, they won't. They want to move in here. But since this place is so heavily protected... They uh, don't, and we lose one of these Legionnaires. All righty, cool, cool, cool. And where else? Uh, Carnuntum. All right, well, then the Huns say, we'll go this way. We've got this exit. But they want to come out this way, and hey, remember at the beginning, we dropped this guy off? He protected the area and kept those Huns at bay. Nice. As you might imagine, in this game, there are lots of different strategies that don't really adhere to regular pandemic formula. One of them is a major strategy of containment. Keeping these guys in their home regions, don't let them get out on the board in the first place if you can. Alrighty, so that was that, and we have finished. It's back to Vestalis, and folks, I think I'm going to stop right there. So that should give you a pretty good idea of the basics. But if you want to watch a few more rounds, see some more stuff happen, if you want to see me engage in a peace treaty with um, one of the tribes, you can go on ahead and hit that eye up in the top right corner screen and go to the extended playthrough, or instead you can go straight to Final Thoughts. Your choice in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.